Welcome to another episode of Salvation Army Disaster Radio. You know, a few episodes back, Christy Sutton gave you a tour of a Salvation Army canteen, and that's a great unit for most disasters. But when things get really bad, when things get catastrophic, and you gotta pump out thousands of meals a day, it's time to up your game a whole lot. That's when we bring out a Salvation Army field kitchen. That's the Goliath of our food service fleet. And to introduce us to this food service monster, we have our own master of disaster and food service expert, Kevin Smith. Thanks, bud, for being on the podcast again. My pleasure, Jeff. Tell us a little bit, how did the Salvation Army come to get involved with field kitchens of this size? Well, you know, back in 1997, we had the, the first unit that we've ever had. And it was um, a little less than this. And we've learned through disasters on how it applies and things that we can do better to increase our capacity. This unit's a little bit different from that first one we started with. So let's talk about some of those advantages. Bigger, better, more efficient, I like it. Let's take a look inside. Okay, let's go. So Kevin, here we are inside this large Salvation Army field kitchen, and I see a lot of the same stuff I might see on a canteen, just more of it. Over there you've got three coffee pots. Back here we've got a massive refrigerator freezer. But what makes this different than just being a big super-sized canteen? Well, the, the truth is, I kind of need to tell you the story of the kitchen and how we got um, fr from the original design of just a bigger canteen to where we are today. Uh, and, and the best way for me to tell you that is the story of 9-11. You know, we took our first design of our kitchen to 9-11 at Ground Zero in New York City. Um, and we quickly found ourselves trying to find innovative ways to build the capacity of our kitchen. And as you know, when we arrived, quickly we were doing 5,000 meals a day. That was easy. But we started to say, if we could put some convection ovens and combine it to this kitchen, if we could put these other components all together, we could increase that capacity. And Jeff, three weeks into 9-11, we were cooking at 20,000 meals a day. Wow. And being on the ground, learning that type of information from disaster to disaster has brought us to this point. So it was trial by fire. There you are rolling your first kitchen into ground zero and you had to build as you went. That's exactly right. And, and we learned a lot of great and valuable. We learned things we couldn't do, learned things that we shouldn't do on the scene. And that's where we are today with our big kitchens. So Kevin, what are these? Well, these are the convection ovens. Now, you've probably even seen convection ovens in the past. They come in different shapes and sizes. These are actually these look square. mega. They are square. <laughs> but these are the mega uh, convection ovens. And the reality is these can pump meals out very quickly, high volume, at temperature, and it helps us to increase that capacity. We're always looking for ways that we can increase capacity, serve more, and serve it with good food, safe, hand, safe food handling at the same time. What's the difference between a convection oven and a regular oven? Well, a convection oven moves the air around the food. It allows it to get hotter quicker uh, and to maintain even flow around the food. When you're talking about a regular oven, it takes a long time to heat something up and you kind of have to worry and manage that food a little bit more. Con convection ovens take a lot of that out of, the, uh, out of your preparation. Faster, safer, more efficient. Absolutely. All right, now this thing I gotta try. This has actually has a crank on it, yeah. which is kind of pretty cool. <laughs> Jeff, don't touch that, that's technical. Sorry. We'll get to that I just in a second. I'm not a cook. You know, Jeff, we talk about the things that really increase the capacity. We learn from our partners, from the Southern Baptists who, who respond to disasters and have been using field kitchens for a long time. The installation of tilt skillets really change the amount of product you're able to pump out. Not only can you cook, boil, do stuff inside this kitchen, it makes it easier for cleaning. You actually can tilt this out, you can move it to a different product source. We have the Salvation Army Tambros. Dump it right into the Cambros, no mess. Not a lot of lifting, shuffling stuff around. It's a pretty simple process. That's right, you can empty out this full container into the Cambro in a matter of seconds, close the Cambro, move it out, get your next preparation for your next meal ready to go. It's easy for cleanup. It makes a, the whole process, the idea is quickly, efficiently, get it out to the community as fast as you can. You don't do 20,000 meals a day off this unit without learning those steps and being able to implement it on the ground. I guess you gotta have a lot of different equipment on this uh, to make this kitchen work, but uh, I guess Cambros have gotta be one of the most important. They absolutely are. The, the skill of using a Cambro, you have the tilt skeletons that can move it in there, but having the Cambro allows you to maintain the safe temperature of your food, mm -hmm. take it from this location at a certain temperature, on-site delivery and you maintain that temperature, it's absolutely necessary for the safety of the food. It's it simple. also makes it easy. Seal it up, no spill, no mess. 
keeps the food nice and nice and warm. And uh, certainly, folks, if you want to make sure how you use a proper Cambro, check out our other pa- podcast, Five Things You Need on Your Canteen. I'll give you a little tip on how to use these even more effectively. Kevin, thanks for the great tour, but frankly, I wouldn't have a clue how to use this in an actual disaster situation. What's the plan to really utilize this in the field? Well, you know, we increase the capacity, we can do a lot of meals, um, but there's two different functions that you can use in getting it out to the people. Um, And one of those is called a hub and spoke concept, and if you will, um, you have basically this becomes the hub of your feeding operation. You can cook that quantity, 20,000 meals a day, put them in the Cambros, the Cambros then go from the kitchen full of food out to the points of service. And it's important to know that is a very valuable mechanism for getting food out to the people quickly. So the kitchen is the center, the hub, and the spokes are canteens which push these meals that this unit is cooked out to all the different people in the different neighborhoods that need food. Exactly. Again, it's about getting the food to the point of need in a timely manner. You can't always do that from one disaster to the next with large quantities of food. The hub and spoke system really helps to get it quickly to the place that it needs to be. Is there other uses for this? I mean, it sounds like uh, during 9-11, is that what you did there? Actually, no. I mean, so when you're not doing that large quantity of meals, when you can actually do it by serving people off the kitchen, you can actually have the crowd come up. And if you'll note that on this kitchen, you actually have a ramp system that can come up and then a a door that can open that they can hand still have that personal touch to serving the victim. But that's when you're talking about smaller numbers of people that are more manageable on a fixed site. So if I've got 15,000 people at one location that need food, I drop this bad boy in place and suddenly I just push meals out that window to it. That's exactly right. Man, thanks for the tour. I appreciate it. Good luck in Florida. Hope we have a good hurricane season. (laughs) Thank you, me too. And that's a wrap for this edition of Salvation Army Disaster Radio. Thanks so much for watching, and we really do appreciate your feedback. It's easy to do. Just drop us an email at disasterradio at uss.salvationarmy.org. Thanks again. See you in another episode. We appreciate you watching.